Hello everyone, um, my name is Rosie Goldsmith and welcome to the online book club brought to you by the Cultural Department of the Swiss Embassy in London. Now I do a number of things, I'm a journalist, I'm a broadcaster, I'm director of the European Literature Network but tonight I'm wearing my Swiss hat as you can see um, and because I run a project in the UK called Literally Swiss which is for the Swiss Arts Council Pro Helvetia and we have the goal of promoting Swiss literature in the UK. Now the novel we're discussing tonight is a very special novel for all three of us um, who you're going to hear from um, coming together this evening. It's called Winter in Sokcho and it was written by the Swiss-French author Elise Chouet du Zapin in 2016. It did very well in French. Um, it was translated then um, by the British translator Anissa Abbas Higgins and it was published by Daunt Books in February this year. And it's been very, very widely reviewed. And um, in fact, it's been called a masterpiece. And it is in French and it is in English as well. Now through the, one, the wonders of modern technology, we've all come together um, and we're going to bring author and translator and, and several readers together. I'm just going to let a few more into the meeting here. Excuse me one second while I admit Madeleine and Bruno. Great, okay. And they're all going to sit and listen very patiently while, um, <laughs> while we talk about the book. And I'm going to put this on to speak of you now and continue a little bit more um, telling you a little bit more about the book and about what we're going to do. Now, Elisa, um, who you can see at the moment on screen, and Anissa, the translator, and I are going to discuss uh, Winter in Sokcho for about half an hour, and then we're going to invite you um, to give your questions as well, as well. Now, Anissa and I are going to speak in English. And Elisa will speak mainly in French, and she does understand English, which is fine, but she's um, basically decided that she's going to speak in French. And um, Anissa, the translator, will, will sum up what she says. So we've got Anissa and Elisa, and I hope I can tell them apart. A very short introduction to Elisa first. Now, Elisa's parents are French and Korean, and she grew up in France and Korea. Um, and today lives in the Jura, um, in the Swiss canton of Jura. She graduated from a very famous um, Swiss literature creative writing school in Biel in Bienne. And in 2016, this, she published her first novel. She was really young, Yves à Sokcho, Winter in Sokcho. It's won numerous prizes. It's been made into um, a theatre piece as well, been adapted into a play. And her second novel, The Pachinko Marbles, um, has already also been awarded a major Swiss literature award. Um, that hasn't been translated into English yet. And her third novel, Vladivostok Circus, is out in Switzerland this August. So it's very, very exciting. Now, normally, I wouldn't comment on anyone's age, but I am actually going to say something to Elisa. Um, Elisa, are you there? I am here, yes. You are there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry to comment on your age, but you are uh, very young. And you're, you did this at such a young age. Now, I know there are geniuses who write books at 16, but to have got the success that you have at such a young age, because you were 24 when um, Sokcho was, was published, I believe. Did you, now, for us, you know, this is, it, it's, uh, we're not surprised because it is a wonderful book, but were you surprised at how well the book did? Did you expect this? Did you know um, the great book when you wrote it? <laughs> no, uh, of course not. I I was very very surprised. But even when when I was write, uh, writing my book, I even never uh, thought about publishing it. So um, it was my um, French teacher when I was uh, in high school um, who encouraged me to send it to a publisher and. Just I did it like uh, anyway. It will never be published. And then when when it were published, I had to stop everything. Uh, I had hadn't time anymore to go to to the, the university because of the promotion tour. And then yes, everything went so fast. And I'm still very um, surprised right now to be to tell me to uh, to think to, uh, that i am a writer it's, a, it's still something very strange to me now this is um now everybody says about um an author that every author has one autobiographical novel in them at least uh, and this novel reflects 
several of the aspects of your life, the French Korean narrator, the, the young woman who is about who is about your age, in fact, in this novel, in, in Winter and Softcho, um, how much of it, it does reflect concerns that you have um, as a as a Franco 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 Korean and and having the the background that you do and the language mm. that you speak. Um. <clears throat> I grew up in a very multicultural family uh, in between France and Switzerland, but I discovered Korea, South Korea, only at the age of 13 uh, when I traveled there for the first time. And it was a real shock to me because uh, until that point, South Korea was for me only food and language. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a very strange feeling because um, I felt very uh, close to this culture. I discovered the whole culture of my, my mother. Um, I could recognize uh, a lot of things I already knew before in Europe. But in the same time, I felt so uh, like a stranger there. And I think with Winter in Sokcho, I tried to to write, um, to, to build a, a voice of a, a girl um, who, who was born in South Korea um, and a girl who, who could um, ex express things uh, like a real uh, Korean woman. Mm. Um, Yes. <laughs> no, abs absolutely. I mean, it, it is absolutely fascinating too, because I thought, well, that there must be a lot of you in that novel. As that, I don't know whether you feel as well. You've written three novels now, and you put, from what I hear from other novelists, you put an awful lot into the first novel. You put nearly everything. You think you're putting your whole life into your first novel, and maybe you did. It's a very slim novel, but there is so much in that novel. Um, do you think that's? Do you think you put? Do you think you put your life into that novel, into that first? Mm. Mm. Je, je vais continuer en français juste pour cette question parce que c'est un peu complexe. Oui. Um, je crois que chacun, chacun des livres que j'écris. Um, C'est une manière pour moi d'essayer effectivement de, de découvrir un peu mieux euh, qui je suis, d'une certaine manière. Dans mon premier roman, euh, il y a des aspects de mon autobiographie assez évidents dans les liens entre euh, voilà, la, la, la France, la, la Corée du Sud. Mais plus j'avance dans l'écriture, euh, plus je, je me rends compte que j'arrive à me détacher des questions autobiographiques, mais paradoxalement, j'ai l'impression d'être encore plus proche de, de moi-même, en fait, à travers la fiction. C'est très, très intéressant. Anissa, tu es là pour traduire? Oui. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Anissa, something to do. Hello, Anissa. How nice to see you. Oh, hello. Yes. Um, um, Elisa said that um, with every novel she writes, that, that she, she feels that she is discovering more of herself and that um, yes there are certain things about the first novel that are quite clearly part of her life part of her experience nevertheless that she in in writing each novel she is discovering another part of herself and paradoxically the further away she gets from that first novel the, the, the closer she feels she is getting to herself let me, um, as you're there, let me introduce um, you to everyone um, watching because um, it's, it's lovely that you're there. Now, Anissa um, Abbas Higgins, who is with us at the moment, Anissa is um, the translator of this um, wonderful novel and is a translator from French, um, an excellent writer herself and was for many years a teacher, many decades a teacher. Um, and you're a great linguist in your life and profession as well. You speak Urdu. English, German, French, Russian, I think. Um, but do you, speak, do you speak Swiss French? And is it different translating Swiss French from French French? Which is... Well, that, 
you know. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, when I when I read it, it didn't. I didn't think about it being Swiss French or, or French French. I mean, um, Elisa's French is very beautiful, and it's very it's 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 very literary French. It's not a novel that's written in a very colloquial kind of style. So I just I I, I wouldn't say that it was that, that I had noticed any difference. And to be honest, I don't know Swiss French that well. I mean, I've spent most of my time. Um, in France, listening to French French, and po possibly the French I'm most familiar with is is the, is the one the French that I hear most these days is the kind of French that you would hear in um, the Marcel Pagnol films, the the, the, the French of the um, the countryside in the south of France, which is a which is a very different language. So I wouldn't say that Elisa's um, text was was particularly seen particularly Swiss to me, especially since it was so, it was. Right. Now, your um, role in bringing this novel to um, to publication, um, and the reason we're sitting here today, all of us, is because you discovered this book. So, tell it us is, the story yeah. of this um, this wonderful, wonderful story, um, because we're all very grateful to you, of course. We're we're also grateful to Elisa for having written it, but <laughs> I think it's uh, it's wonderful. Tell us the story, Elisa. Well, the story is that. Um, Actually, the first book I translated was also a book that I that I discovered and pitched and, and got it published. So I knew I could do this. I knew it was possible. But it was um, it was in the summer. I was in my in my home in France, where it can get very hot indeed in the summer. In fact, it's one of the hottest places in France. And we were in the middle of a heat wave. And um, I have a favourite bookshop in the in the little town near where I live. And I go in there frequently and browse and look for interesting books. And I picked up this little book and started reading it and I was immediately entranced. So I bought it, took it home and read it, devoured it very quickly. And I think that part of the reason I loved it so much was, was to do with the fact that it was so hot. But as I was reading this book, I was able to escape to this world where it certainly wasn't hot at all. Very, and very cold through the it whole was of the Very world. cold, very cold indeed. And 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 the fact but it would but, but really seriously what, what, what grabbed me was 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 the voice and the elegance of the language and the fact that Elisa had managed to do something which very few writers do manage to do successfully, which is to use very, very spare language. There are no extra words. In a way, it's like a poem, because what's, what, the, what the book is, is a series of these very, very beautifully evoked images that are so vivid, written in a language which is very sparse. So every word is carefully chosen. So I knew that translating it would be a challenge, but that I wanted to do it because I like a challenge. So I set about translating the first chapter and um, put together a pitch about the novel and did a little bit of background research and started um, hawking it around the publishers who I thought might be interested. And then an opportunity came up for the online magazine Asymptote. They were looking for new French voices for, um, for a feature they were doing. So I submitted what I'd done and they loved it. They published it. And so, the, so it appeared online. And it was a result of that that um, Jelka Morosovic of Daunt Books, in fact, I hadn't pitched it to her because I didn't know about Daunt Books publishing at that time. So um, but she found it on Asymptote and she approached me and said to me, would I be interested in translating it, that they were thinking of acquiring it? And I said, yes, please. So Can I uh, quickly ask Elisa um, as well? Elisa, I mean, what you've been, this book has been translated into several languages now, Elisa. And I just wonder what, you know, what it means to be translated into English. Um, are you there, Elisa? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. Um, is is there something for you, uh, you know, as you speak English, your sister lives in, in London, um, there's a connection with this country as well. Is it important for you to be translated into English? Uh, I think, in general, the simple fact of traduite in another language is an immense cadeau. It resonates particularly with me because I have my own family and I'm partout un peu partout sur la planet. Et ma, ma, ma petite famille, c'est-à-dire mes parents et mes sœurs, on est les seuls à parler français. Euh, et donc, en fait, tous les autres parlent coréen ou anglais ou allemand. Et c'est vrai que pour cette raison, en partie, la traduction anglaise va être un, un honneur et une joie profonde. Mais je pense en particulier aussi parce que je sais que c'est très difficile de, de pouvoir être traduit en langue anglaise. Euh, je crois vraiment que, que l'anglais, parmi toutes les langues de traduction, c'est un peu ce que 
ce qu'on pourrait rêver de mieux pour un, un auteur puisqu'après le livre est vraiment, peut être diffusé encore plus partout dans le monde mmh. et je m'aperçois vraiment à quel point cette traduction anglaise euh, ouvre, des, enfin, ouvre des portes pour ce livre euh, à des adaptations pour encore plus voilà, pour le théâtre ou de, le cinéma ou des, ou, ou des lecteurs vraiment que je n'aurais pas pu atteindre de, autrement que par cette langue donc, euh, donc ça rés... enfin, c'est c'est très impressionnant pour moi de, de m'apercevoir de ça et, et intimidant aussi puisque là je me retrouve avec mmh. l'ambassade à Londres. <rire> ça, <voilà. rire> Anissa, Anissa, est-ce que tu es là? <rire> oui, je suis là. Oui. Ok, so um, Elisa said that she thinks that, that being translated into any language is, is, is a gift and especially for her because her family is, is scattered all over the world and, and they speak, they, 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 her family doesn't all speak French, just her immediate family speaks French. So other people speak English, German, Korean. So to be translated into English was a particularly special privilege for her because it is it, not just so that she could be understood by, by wider members of her, her family, but also because being translated into English, it, it, it opens all sorts of doors because it is the, it's such a world language spoken all over the world. It brings new readers to her work. And it also offers all sorts of possibilities for adaptations and mm -hmm. it and, and she feels it um, as something of a responsibility, slightly intimidating, but she's very, very grateful for it. So, Well, I mean, it's we'll talk a little bit more about language and translation later, but just um, if you've been following the previous um, videos and the rest of the book club, um, thanks to Anissa, who's been who's been telling us about the book. But I'll just remind you a little bit about the um, the story. Um, and so it takes place, it's a very slim volume, as you know, it takes place in, in Sokshu, um, and it is winter, it is very cold, as Anissa says, um, it's a coastal resort, it's a border town 60 kilometers away from North Korea, um, and it's very full in the summer, this place, it's a summer resort, um, but empty in the winter. And The novel opens in a, um, a guest house. It has very few guests and it's as though everybody's waiting for something to happen. Um, it's run by an, a man called Old Parks and um, the young woman, the unnamed narrator who's 24, she's the receptionist. And then one day a man, a Frenchman arrives um, and he's called Jan Keran. And he is looking for inspiration. He's a very famous graphic novelist. He's looking for inspiration for his graphic novel. Um, and he is there and he's observing. Now, everybody is waiting for something. Everybody's watching everybody else. It's, um, it's a novel full of great tension. It's very enigmatic as well. Um, It's a, it's got the, the town and the book and the mood of the novel is very in between, very um, no man's land. Everything is blurred. There's a kind of ambivalence to it all as well. Um, now, if we talk about the, the tensions in this novel and maybe um, Elisa and Anissa can come together for this one too, but the, the tension is, is what? I mean, it is, What, what are they waiting for? <laughs> what is everybody waiting for? Um, I guess this kind of tension is um, because I try to write um, things with a lot of um, sen sensu sensuality mm -hmm. um, and not uh, psychological uh, things. So uh, everything the um, figure, the characters uh, feel um, It's through the, the body, the, the smell, the, the taste and the sounds and not uh, with a language or converse, converse, conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think um, they, they are two very lonely uh, characters and looking for something about um, they, they self, themselves. Mm. Um, that's why actually the relationship between both of them is not really um, a research or, or they are not really, really trying to discover each other, but each other is... Um, They're sort of reflected in each other. and they're... Yes, exactly. It's like a mirror, actually. Yeah. I mean, he is, he is, he's French and he's old enough to be her father. 
Um, and it's always, always throughout the novel, you're wondering, does she just want another father figure? Because the, the, the story behind this um, is that uh, um, the young woman's father is French and he left the mother who's Korean, um, at, left her with the baby, with the child. And so she's been brought up on her own by her mother. And um, so there's some, there's always this longing she has um, for France, for another life. And she studies French and Korean literature too. So I'm not gonna go on the, the parallels with you and your life again, but um, there, is, there is something um, which it's, it's, never, it's very difficult to resolve their relationship, to understand what they want from each other. He wants her, it seems to me, in order to show him um, Sokjo, to show him her life. He's looking for inspiration. He wants a woman in this graphic novel of his, doesn't he? He wants to find a woman, he find, wants to find a location, he wants to find inspiration. She wants to find somebody who can see her somebody who um, will help her out of this kind of m messy ambivalence that she's living in and rescue her perhaps. Do you think Anissa is that? Oh I think very much so yes and I think um, I, I think that the, the, the cultural ambivalence that, that, that is there throughout the novel and is is related to I mean, as you say there is this erotic tension you know it is, is they are drawn to each other they are attracted to each other but they both want something completely different out of, out, out of this and funnily enough I mean listening to you to, to you and to Elisa talking about this 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 cultural ambivalence in, in the book I realized that that it was again it was one of the things that drew me to it because um, my father's Indian I grew up in a multicultural environment and and I think I can I it was something that spoke to me I could understand that this 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 longing for her father's culture um, I mean I know my father my father is in fact still alive um, he's a hundred years old this year but um, I, I, I as I was growing up I felt I didn't know his culture I didn't know enough about it and, and um, I think I we feel that in in, in the narrator in, in Winter in Sokcho and I, I'm you know, I think Elisa has 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 depicted it very beautifully because it's very subtle. It's, I mean, as she says, everything in this book is very subtle. She doesn't indulge in sort of interior monologues or psychologizing. We 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 have to we have to we have to sort of intuit it almost ourselves from these vivid sensory images that you know there is i mean there's a lot of smells and touch and taste in the book as well it's not just the visual images so so it is a very sensual novel a very sensory and sensual novel which brings me to the language and the translation of of this because um this is very very special language there are so many images it is so visceral and there are lots of friends we haven't even talked about fish yet there are, <laughs> we will talk about fish um, there are lots of uh, fish names in it too as well and i wonder um you're a very sensitive translator and it, the translation has been very highly praised um by the many reviews that there have been as well and the french is beautiful as well how how did you work together the two of you because i know you did work together and you tried very hard anisa to reflect not just the words themselves but the 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 the, the feeling behind them mm. um and i can tell that that you both invested a lot of emotion into this into this novel from both languages french and english mm. so together maybe you can discuss that um, particular aspect of the, the 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 language the translation of these images the sensory nature of it um, I start, well, I, I asked a lot of questions and um, it, it's something that I, I like to do if, if, I, if I can with, when I'm translating something. And what I tend to do is I, I go all the way through the book um, and as I'm going, I, I, I note down the things that I'm, I'm not sure about. And then I come back to it on my second, second draft and I keep trying to answer the questions myself. So I won't approach an author until I've really made a good effort to, um, to um, understand the questions, you know, to, to, to deal with my questions myself. But my questions to Elisa, I think, it, 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 because there is so much in the novel which is hinted at rather than rather than described, I wanted to be sure that I wasn't going off on the on a, on, a, on the wrong tangents. So I wanted to be sure that what I understood it to mean 
is in fact what she had intended it to mean. And so I did ask a lot of questions where I, I would say, is this, you know, did you mean this or did you mean that? Yeah. Um, and and, and isn't, also, that, isn't that the same, Elisa, um, for any translator? Because I, I, Elisa, if you're there, I mean, it's the the important thing for an author. You not many authors get that involved mm -hmm. in the translation of the book, mm -hmm. and I wonder. You know, I know you were very careful not to approach Elisa before you had um, lots of questions and you'd sorted out some for yourself. But um, how involved did you become with each other? I and mean, how, how much contact did you have? Yeah. Elisa? Um, on n'a pas eu tant de contact que ça, mais quelques emails qui étaient très denses mm -hmm. euh, ouais. et qui m'ont énormément touchée parce que le livre est traduit dans d'autres langues. Que, donc pour certaines, je, je peux les comprendre un peu. Et du coup, en lisant la traduction, euh, alors que je n'avais pas forcément eu de contact avec le traducteur, je me suis rendu compte qu'il y avait vraiment eu des interprétations où ce n'est pas quelque chose qui me dérangeait, mais en tout cas, je, je, c'était vraiment interprété de manière très différente de ce que moi, j'avais voulu exprimer. Mmh. Et euh, par des détails en fait, de choix de traduction, par exemple, dans la traduction coréenne, euh, le traducteur est resté très proche de la structure de la langue française en indiquant très souvent le sujet avant le verbe euh, « je »,« je »,« fais »,« je », etc. Alors qu'en Corée, euh, en principe, on ne le fait pas. Et si on indique le sujet, ça, ça marque vraiment l'accent sur le, sur le, le, le sujet. Quoi. Et, et en fait, comme dans mon texte, j'avais envie que la, la narratrice soit plutôt une figure un peu effacée, pas tellement sûre d'elle, euh, cet effet dans la traduction coréenne a au contraire donné l'impression qu'elle est très sûre d'elle, elle, elle assume vraiment ce qu'elle fait, ce qu'elle dit. Et, et avec euh, les échanges que j'ai eus avec Anissa, ça m'a permis de, bah, vraiment d'être très rassurée sur le fait qu'il que, que y avait une forme d'osmose vraiment dans, de pensée. Et, et c'est merveilleux quand ça se passe comme ça. <rire> Well, Anissa, isn't that wonderful? Um, no, yes. <laughs> it's very translate nice. your own praise there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. well, El um, Elisa said that, um, I mean, we, we didn't, I mean, we didn't meet, you know, this, this is the only way we've actually met is like this. Um, but, but we did exchange some emails and, and, and the content of those emails was quite dense. You know, I think I asked Elisa some questions that she really had to think about herself and her answers were not simple and transparent. And she says that she realized when in, she had, can understand a certain amount of all the translations. Um, and that I think, I mean, I'm going to interpret a bit here and it's something that she said. I, I think that as translators, we have a choice between staying as close to the text as possible. And even if we come up with something which is slightly foreign sounding, as it were, in, 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 our, in our own language, or we can choose to try to convey the same impressions we want to have the same impression on the reader and that's that that's my approach I don't want it to read like it was written in another language I want it to read like it was written in, in English I regard it as my job to create beautiful prose in English that mirrors the beautiful prose of the of, of the original so it may depart here and there um, that when you when you make those changes you can't stick that closely to the to the words you have to stick to what is beneath the words what lies beneath the words and I think in our exchanges that's what that's what we tried to do with Elisa and I and, and she she says she appreciates it because she felt like it was a real sort of it was her that it, it is her own voice that's expressed in, in my translation so you can buy this book directly from Daunt Books if you're in the UK and um, otherwise you, know, you can easily Google it and find out where else you can buy it. I want to say thank you so much to, um, to Elisa Schur de Zappin. It's been such a pleasure to see you again. We met at a festival in Switzerland in the mountains in Leukebad last summer. It would be so lovely to be there again this summer, but I suspect we won't be able to. Anissa um, Abbas Higgins is the most marvelous um, translator, and it's been wonderful to work with you also over the last few months. We've, we've got to know one another very well as well. And um, I also want to remind people that um, um, the next book, Elisa's next book, is called Vladivostok uh, Circus, and that comes out in August in French. Edition Zoe, which is the um, amazing French publishing house in Switzerland. Um, and also um, Pachinko Marbles. Um, I think in, in French it's Les Boules Pachinko. 
Les ça. billes du pachinko. Les billes du pachinko. <rire> so we've got three novels and we can read them all um, and hopefully they will all be translated into English. Let's cross our fingers. Thank you everyone very, very much indeed and thank you to the Swiss Embassy for hosting this. Um, bon soirée à tout le monde. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Bye. Merci. Bye. 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 Thank you Bye. very much to everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>